Right, I'm just checking the live stream as I've started. It seems to be struggling to get up to speed, which is always a concern. It's dropping frames. Okay. Seems to be going now. Let's boot up the live stream thing on um, YouTube and it's given a server error. <laughs> and the quote is. Uh, sorry, something went wrong. A team of highly trained monkeys has been dispatched to deal with the situation. If you see them, send this information as text, because it's got like an error log there. And screenshots frighten them. That's pretty cool. <laughs> this little sense of humour. I love that. Okay. Ah, we've already got someone. So, let's see how we go. Let's get this window set up so I can see what I'm doing. I think I'm pretty much set to go. Uh, yeah, Kathy, I got your email from my other site. Cool, oh, interesting little read. Thanks for that. Certainly a consideration to have. lay things out so I can see what I'm doing. I didn't quite get prepared right for this. Moving things around. So I need to see the diagrams and stuff myself. Okay. I think we're there. So, there you are. Um, everyone's turned up. Let's play around with windows. Here we go. Um, so I'm back on this HP 42618. Um, yeah, sure. I'll let you know, Kathy. I've got your email address now, so that's, um, I'll be in touch with Anita. Thanks for that. Um, what's I going to look for? Well, I need to change the name of the stream. Um, the 4261A investigation. comes up with the right name now. Yeah, cool. Um, I was compiling some video yesterday, uh, yesterday evening for um, for the stuff I've already recorded. I think I've got about seven videos with the footage already recorded. I've already um, created two videos, uh, yeah, two, two and a half videos. I've got a third one half done um, for this, going through the procedure, testing and that sort of stuff. And I've got so much footage here, I've still got dozens and dozens of clips, so it's uh, it's going to be a long video series, I think. Um, so, what you're kind of seeing is, obviously after that point, um, because I've already recorded it and done that work, but I don't remember half of what I've done, so honestly, so it's, it's a bit tricky. Hopefully audio is okay, I've moved the mic around a little bit today to try and get a better capture between here and the bench. Um, it's only slightly moved, it may, may not make a difference because it's got a directional microphone, so it's um, so it captures okay, hopefully. A bit of both. If I have it facing away from me at all, like towards the bench, then it's all, um, it echoes me because it, it trims me right down because that's what it's supposed to do. Uh, anyway, let's get talking about this thing. So, we've got the. I've got on the screen right here now is the A4 board, which I was looking at last night. And. You see here, um, it's got relays K3 and K4, which are right in the middle of that little screenshot there. Um, on my board, they're not there. So if I, if you look at this board here, there's... Um, I'll get it a bit closer to the camera so you can see it. So on here, K1, K2, no K3 and no K4. So this is obviously a revision of the board, which is a little bit different. Um, Interesting, it's still got the same transistors here for all the switching, which is a bit odd. It changed this bit, but not this bit. So they've got some FETs up here. So they've obviously decided that they're going to do FET switching instead of relays for that particular part of the circuit. So I thought that was interesting. Um, now, but it's obviously revision. I see... I'll give you the full board on, in no case it matters to anyone. It's 0 to 
uh, sorry, 04261-77004, which is 04 board, um, and C-1614. So I'm guessing it's C of the board. Uh, that's my guess anyway. So you expect that kind of stuff. Between that diagram area yesterday and for the A5 ball, which showed the inputs of one of the op amps back to front. Um, and this, you're going to guess that sort of stuff. That sort of stuff, so I don't really revise the designs that much. So, right, six washing so far. I'm a little bit earlier, I suppose. I did say about nine o'clock tonight, so it's, well, it's nine o'clock now. Uh, I'm still waking up. <laughs> uh, can't keep waking me up in the middle of the night, so that's not great. Hi, Brian. Um, so, yeah, so I'm just going to pack around this a little bit and just see what we can find. Now, I basically eliminated the A4 board. I'll go through what I did yesterday. Um, I didn't record the video of it, I don't think. Oh, maybe I did. I might have recorded a little bit of video. Um, yeah, actually I did. But I'll just cover it with you as well. Let's just zoom this out a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. So, the A4 board. Let's go to a bigger view. Hope I can get to fit a bit better. Without being too much. So I'm trying to make it as big as I can from the other view on the desk view, so hopefully it's okay. Um, so we have this is the A4, as you can see up here at the top corner. This is all the oscillator section here, range source resistors, so changing ranges. As you can see at the bottom there, R100, R10. R1, 1K, R10K, alright, so that's the ranging which controls those relays, which is why I was surprised about the whole um, missing relay thing. But uh, also, they've worked out they could do it without having those relays there, so they changed it, which is cheaper for them, I suppose. So, there's the unknown connector, as they call it, at the front. So, what we we're looking at yesterday is the A5 ball, which comes off the high side. Now what I was looking at was the A4 ball, which comes to the low side. Uh, because of, uh, who, who said it? Someone said um, about the op amp potentially being damaged from a charge capacitor. So I got, the, got me looking around that input section. Um, oh, I see, that's again. Um, and so I think, oh, okay, anything that's directly opposite that connector could be at risk. So I thought I'll check this U2 op amp, which is right here. Zoom a bit more so you can see it slightly better. Alright, so I checked that op amp out and that seemed fine. Um, I couldn't fault that, it looks okay. Had a bit of poke around, just some voltage measurement checks, that kind of thing. And um, this actually goes off the side of this particular page, it's change page or so on. It's a double scan instead of overlapping scans. There. Yes, there it is there. Alright. So I checked the measurements there, so it's got a diode at the bottom there, it's got plus 12 volts going to it, which then gives a 3 volt output the other side, that's all there. I checked all those transistors that are next to it, those Q30 through Q34, they all checked out okay. Um, and the 11.2 volts and 2.9 volts switching there, all right, so that shows that particular state being on. Um, those are checking out okay. And what I ended up doing is looking at the 6L connection which is right at the top of the screen now on the right hand side um, which is the output of the, from the board for following the Q20 so it passes through you get Q20 and out to that 6L and um, that seemed to be okay I was getting signals switching on in and out as it's going through ranges so I'm fairly sure that's with these um, terminals shorted out I should specify that I shorted those terminals so you're getting the oscillator passing straight through All right. Um, so that way I could see the input output here. Right, if I if I took the short out, then that, that signal went away. So it's passing through all the circuitry and getting out this board. So it appears that the A4 board is okay. Um, it appears that way. We'll see how we go, but um, I think it probably is fine. So now we sort of need to sort of think about the theory more about how this thing actually works and. Um, well, what it does is it checks phases. So it's got a um, phase detector and stuff like that in there. And if I go a bit lower in here, 
here we go, here's the face tetra, which is which is supposed to be. Is it gonna jump now or not? It's not jumping there. That's thing we Also that link doesn't work, okay. It's here somewhere. No, we've gone past it. So there's the face tetra ball. No, that's a five ball. Okay. Interesting. All right, there's the face detector ball there. Maybe some pages missing. That's interesting. So here's a troubleshooting guide for that. I haven't gone into this part yet. So um, this is probably, I think, I think I've done this bit yet anyway. Some waveforms I don't recognize, so maybe I didn't, maybe I'll try and do what I did there. I don't know, I'm waffling. So, it's face tits adjustment stuff, so it could be face tits is an issue. And is that the ball? Yes it is. So for some reason the pages are out of sequence. And you know, normally it shows the ball first, then the other information, so I'm not quite sure why it's better front there. No, That's just the way I scanned it. And here's the circuit diagram. So, let's have a look at this first and see what we've got going on. So there's the input there from the board 5, the A5 board which we were looking at yesterday, which comes into this op amp here. And there should be one somewhere from the 4, board 4, somewhere. Doesn't show it. Maybe it's going somewhere else first. I'll have to look at that. I'm not seeing a big four anywhere. But uh, anyway, so the imp input there, so we can probably follow through this path here and um, see if we can find anything obviously wrong. Um, just check a few op amps and that sort of thing. But uh, this is where it gets a bit more complicated. I mean, there's a triple five timer here. Might be easy to check with if it's running. you think so anyway. And Four face selector, so it's got switching. Zoom a bit more. Switching over here. So we'll have a play around with that, I think, and we'll just poke around this board and see what we can find. So this is the A6 board, as I said, and um, we'll have a look and see if we can find anything that's not right. Hopefully, so I think I'm missing something. Let's zoom back out a little bit. So I'm just trying to try and I'm just going to try and um, you know, there's a circuit description here. If I must have a little read of that, I'll zoom in a bit more. Yeah, pause that and look at that if you want it. And some other stuff here. So it describes a bit about how it works. I should probably read that really. But I'm not going to bore you with that, I'll probably read that later on after I've poked around a bit and you know, it's still bits I haven't read of its manual because it's such a big manual. I've um, I've only captured you know, a section of it really. And uh, you know, I've read bits and pieces. <laughs> it's it's too much to read. I, too long didn't read. It's the you know T T L D. Is it T L D R or something like that? Too long didn't read. <laughs> Which is a problem when you're trying to fix something, I suppose. So, yeah, we'll play around. We'll, we'll have to poke around. We'll go back to the circuit diagram. And we'll start off doing some testing on those op amp inputs and see if we can see anything odd going on. Check voltages, that kind of thing, if I can. Probably some points that I can get onto. Alright, so I've also printed out a manual this time. So, I'm trying to drop stuff on the floor. And I can hopefully look at that to find the parts I need without having to switch back and forwards on the screen. What I want to do is find it in the book. Now I've printed it out. 865 is that part. Also went through and printed out a um, 
a bunch of larger versions of the diagrams because when I printed out, I printed them out. I hope you can see, I can't see what I'm looking at here. Oh, look. I've got windows covered up. It's printed them out like that on the page, right? So it's like, no. Anyway, so I just rotate them around, that sort of stuff. So, uh, what are we looking for? A7? No, A6 is here somewhere. Here's A6. So now I can see the parts layout without having to look at the computer. Makes a lot more sense now. Okay, so let's put this board here back in again. And I shall change camera view so you can see what I'm doing because that makes a bit of sense, doesn't it? Here we go. We'll do that one. Or should we do. We'll do that one. So you can still see some of the diagram. And I'll zoom this in a bit. Right. So I've, you may notice I've changed the camera setup slightly. I noticed when I was reviewing that video from yesterday that. It's having trouble focusing. Um, this is a webcam, so it's not my usual camera. So this is new, and um, because it is so close to this unit, it was having trouble focusing on this versus the other things. The, the focal distance was playing up a little bit. I'm not a camera person. I don't understand this whole focal distance stuff. It's not something I've ever looked into. All right, so it seems to be better from what I can see now. It's got a wider well, a longer range there, it should be a bit better for that focal issue. That's the plan. So, A6 we want, don't we? So, that was um, 3, 4, 5, 6, that one there. This one I've broken up a clip. This one's really tight. I've already broken this clip here, so I'm trying to be really careful with it. So, right. Let's see what we're going to do here. No, I can't see my diagram. I need to move on to the other window. I think. So we will quick look over it just to make sure it looks about the same in case there's differences as well. It looks pretty much the same. Okay, so I'll stick on the extenders. Oh, hi Simon, how's it going? Glad you could join us. I did remember watching your videos originally, Simon, um, on your unit, but I don't remember what you actually did to it now. Um, I was actually hoping you'd be able to drop in. Uh, so, I'm going to have a play around and try and figure out what the hell's going on with this thing because, yes, yeah, so it's not the best. And I put the book over the microphone. That probably doesn't help, does it? No? I made noise when I did that. <laughs> okay, hopefully that's a bit better. Now, I'm just poking around, so I'm just trying to check out what's going on. <laughs> okay, hi Sonia. Mum was a logic board in the end. Okay. Yeah, I do a lot of um, individual replacement stuff, so it's, it's kind of normal. Let's just try and get this in shot a little bit better, so I can get the diagram next to it. Hopefully it's not too bad. I should probably fire this up too, should I? I'm bound to need it. Yeah, well, we'll see how we go, so I'm, 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 I'm just poking around. I don't actually remember your videos very well. I mean, I know I did watch them, but um, I didn't um, mem memorise them. I probably do need to go back and review them. Can I throw what the fall is? Yeah, sure. Basically, what's happening is it doesn't measure anything. Um, I'll show you. So, it's currently got that on there, which is always interesting. Have I got a test mode on? Have I got a time to No, I don't. So, yeah, shut the tweezers in the front. Alright, so it'll measure zero. And you can see it's jumping around a little bit on resistance there. And in distance, it'll measure zero as well. Okay, so it'll do that. But 
it won't actually measure apart. So if I put my clip leads, no, I'll just put my clip leads away over here. Get back out again. So I'll shove these in. Uh, and grab a cap. I did this yesterday as well, demonstrated this yesterday. Um, it doesn't work in any mode. Resistance, capacitance, inductance, doesn't, none of them work. So I've got a cap across there, stick an auto on capacitance, obviously. 120 hertz. And just jumps through ranges and never actually brings back a value. So that's basically what it's doing. It'll do, it'll do that whichever mode I'm in. It does the same kind of thing for everything, resistance and inductance. Um, I'll show you the resistance one. I've got a bit of a resistor out my little test box to do it. So it's sun across it, doesn't it now? And check on resistance. This can't be set 820 ohms. And just does the same thing. Jumps around. And gives meaningless numbers when it does generate something. So I'm suspecting it's a uh, an analog issue somewhere, but I'm not sure exactly where that will be. So yeah, that's where we're at for that. And just jump, jump through the ranges. If I do the self test, um, those come back okay. In my original videos, which I haven't published yet, so no one's seen them. Um, I run through those self-test routines with the switch test one, test two, and um, I actually thought there might have been a fault because the display goes blank and shows out of range. But if I, I found later in the manual that there's actually a section charting um, what order um, display will be for each range, and it actually turned out it's fine. So when I've done doing those auto tests, I've not seen anything out of the ordinary apart from I think on the test two there was something there. Let's chop on test two now and so I'm getting these random numbers so it opens probes I'm getting these random ones sometimes see this and that otherwise it all matches up you know so so yeah, that's that's the interesting part there so that may be a clue there I need to dig into that part some more as well about why there could be numbers there. So, get back in there. No, okay, I wonder if I find the correct range, it was one of the ICs and logic board from memory. Okay, I'll bear that in mind. I'm hoping it's not a bloody digital issue. <laughs> They're not easy to daily dig through. Doing, well, I, mean, I can do logic analysis because I've got the MSO scope there, which has got eight inputs for the digital channels, and um, I've also got that uh, unit which I did a review on the um, Zero Plus logic analyzer, which is um, was it 40 channels, 40 input channels. So I've got no shortage of channels. Um, so if I need to, I can go into that route, but I'd rather not. Okay, well, let's have a poke around here and see what we can find, shall we? So, um, I believe this actually mentioned modes, did it, for voltage measurement? Sometimes I do. No, it doesn't mention that, not from what I can see. So, let's have a little poke around and see what we can see there. I'm only about to see this myself, too, which I can't currently do. So, we want U8. And U9, which are in the middle of the board. That's those two there. So that's U. So that's U9. That's U10. Where's U8? There's U8 down there. So there's U8. There's U9. So those are the two devices I'm be looking at. And I need to find pin two, three, and one to start off with. So that's nice and easy. That's measuring something. I've got it on roll mode. Well, there's a signal going through there. And uh, 
two, three, and one is the output. So there's stuff passing through the op amp. That's fine. So and then we got five, six, and seven of the other section. Nothing there. But that's not unusual for op amps. You can't see sometimes. And there's signal there. So yeah, that seems right. Are those six tie through resistor. Yeah. Okay. It's a doubler. It's like a doubler on the second part of that. So I was reading science kites. Yeah, no riser cards, I can imagine that being a real pain, yeah. Um, second channelizer. Yeah, I don't have one then. <laughs> uh, I've seen them actually, I was tempted to buy one once. I thought, ah, oh, yeah, it could be handy for doing, you know, when I'm working on HP gear. But I didn't do it in the end. I thought, ah, oh, no, maybe I won't because it's a bit of expense, but I should have done it. Um, yes, yeah, so that's basically what I'm doing. I'm not, as you can see, I've got riser cards in here. I, I picked these up off eBay. And there's a guy that sells risers on there. You can even make them to order if you want. You just have to give them the specs and you can make them. They're expensive for what they are, but um, and yet invaluable, you know. So, let's see, here we go. So that first section looks okay, that U8. So we've got some FETs after that. And then is it U9. So look at U9, pin 6. We'll see if the FETs are passing through. Looks like it's got some switching there. Let's drag this over a bit here. So pin 6 and U9. Let's look at that. So that's the bottom one here. Pin 6 will be right there. Not much going on there. Okay. Might change uh, ranges and stuff like that and mode, see if anything comes up. You have to look at the right input. There might be nothing. I've got a set of 5 volts of vision moment, so it's probably related to that as well. Let's just bring this up a bit. 1 volt of vision. Sometimes shorten your puts also changes things. Not much activity going on there. So that's something to consider. I might have to back step a little bit there and see what's going on with those fits. We'll check pin 7, see if there's anything there. Might as well can't see the signal. Well, there's something going on there. Look at that, jumping up and down. Take the short out. Yeah, it's doing something. Try and see if I can get a mode which that's looking pretty consistent there, pulsing. Take the short out, it goes away. So, yeah, it's sensing, it's passing through to that point. So it's little pulses at a frequency coming through, it looks like. Yeah, so, yeah, that looks like it's probably going. Something's passing through, so it might be right. Not entirely sure. What's those feed lines coming from for those FETs? From over here, from those Q3 and Q4 looks of it, which are logic level stuff from the four phase selector. So, this is where things get a bit complicated. Yeah. There's a phase offset 
trimmer there as well, which I think I did actually set when I was doing the troubleshooting stuff before. Right. I'm not quite sure how to proceed from this point actually. Because now it's looking at uh, phases instead, so I might have to reevaluate. Anyone getting ideas? Just carry on poking around. Let's sit down. Trying to see if I can think of a way to proceed from this point. I mean, there is that chest procedure. I suppose I could go through that, couldn't I? It could be lodge again. Hmm. I could try one thing, which I haven't tried yet, and that's checking for hotspots. Um, sometimes that can actually be a real time saver. That might be an option, eh? I could get my little um, temperature um, thermal imager out. Because I, that helped me fix, was it a fluke? Was it uh, 50? something come what it was now it was a oh, signal generator one of the very first projects I did when I was doing lots of handheld camera work and it was messy and not very professional like um, troubleshooting test procedure looks quite comprehensive yeah it does I think I probably will go through that but then it's going to potentially bore you lot to death <laughs> but then there might be anyway um, ok let's find that procedure is up here wasn't it describes how it works so yeah let's look at the procedure here we've got that and we'll go from here eh? we'll follow that through I'm not sure how well it's going to come up on screen though it's pretty small I'm trying to find if I actually did this bit or not already let's just sort of read through it No, this doesn't seem familiar. I haven't done this one yet. So, sure, we'll go through this. Uh, the board is loaded with chips. I think it's the A7. Yeah, the A7 board is the one which is full of chips and almost nothing else. Um, yeah, that's what it'll be. So, yeah, I'll have to have a look at that. Yeah, I actually think I remember watching you doing that a bit now, actually. Yes, yeah, so it rings a bell watching you looking at those logic on those chips. Yeah, it seems familiar. So, let's set this up then, and we will do this procedure, and hopefully, I don't cock it up. <laughs> it's probably doing live streams, anything can happen. Um, so, let's have a look. So, so capacitance range, yes. Parallel internal trigger, yep. Range hold on, unknown open, as they are. A6 TP1 and TP2 with oscilloscope. Did I have the precisely the same phase? Okay, so only two probes. All right, let's get another phase. Another set of probes. Try and get them plugged in with this thing in the way. I'm not get this down. We need to get rid of these um, capacitors I pulled out, but they all tested okay, so I'm sort of hesitant to just chuck them out. I might chuck them on side in case they come in handy for emergencies or not. Right, so I need the clip, and I am going to work with these this time because I'm weighing matter with the noise levels and stuff like that. Good. So helpful is it? What is it not? That's not sticking very well, is it? Seems awfully loose. Hmm. What's wrong with that? It is biting a little bit. It's just a bit dodgy. I'll have to check for that. Might be time for new probes. No. So we'll put channel one on. Was it TP one? Wasn't it? Let's find that. ones over here. Okay. Let's 
and I'll look at the chat again in a second. And I think it's a TP2, doesn't it? Uh, yep, TP2. Okay, thanks Simon, get you, get you low. If any of you um, aren't familiar with Simon Spears' channel, go and check it out. Um, he does some interesting stuff, he does lots of repairs and stuff like I do. Uh, he also does a lot of older radio work as well, like uh, old um, commercial radio, like uh, receivers. So it does some interesting stuff, so make sure you go and check that out if you haven't seen it already. So he's got one of these and he's repaired it himself as well, so you know, it's similar kind of thing too. So if you like my channel, you probably like his too. Let's just get this mess here out of the way. Channel 2 turned on, my backup head's not in the way, and it's fine. Channel 2, bandit, turn it off. DC coupling, ranges, where is channel 2? It is, I think it's overlapping perfectly actually. That's what it looks like to me. Let's uh, shift it down a bit. Hopefully, I'm not seeing anything there. I wonder if I see anything there. What am I missing? There we go. Right, it was shift off the screen. So that looks interesting, doesn't it? Hmm, that's not the same. Both 120 hertz and 1 kilohertz. Well, it's not. Finally, a failure. <laughs> Signal levels shouldn't, that shouldn't affect anything. Actually, it should do because it's parallel capacitance, so maybe it will, but it's not doing anything there. Um, changing triggering doesn't help. Turn the range hold off. Let's see if that change anything. No. So there are definitely not right and there's a cat trying to get out okay it's gone okay so at least you can actually see that in the screen too that's pretty cool <laughs> managed to get it in there uh i wasn't sure i could get the thing that will fit on the screen at the same time so hopefully this procedure is big enough for you to read it let's make this a bit bigger eh? so as i've got a little bit more space on the screen yeah might make it a little bit easier for you hopefully don't know how well it's going to come out. So, no, I don't have the same face. Uh, options are phase is different for the two frequencies or no signal TB2 for any one frequency. So, different. So, we go down this path here. No. So, it's is period for signal at 86 uh, 86 TB2, which is what we're on. For correct measurement frequency within one millisecond. Hold on, let's just try and interpret this meaning. Is it mean it's looking for a frequency for that rather than phase? Okay, well let's have a look at that, shall we? Um, Right, let's do a measure on that, see if we can get a frequency from it. Uh, statistics, oh, uh, channel 2, stats. Uh, type. 
frequency. Where are we? I'm sure it's got frequency on it somewhere. There we go. Turn that one on. Might as well turn on RMS and stuff like that while I'm in here too. Okay. So, channel 2 frequency. Let's see what that's giving us. Give enough range so you can see a more signal. And that's 200 hertz. 215 hertz. If I go to 1 kilohertz, it's 1.7 kilohertz. Based on that trigger point, I suppose. Let's bring this trigger down a little bit in case it's getting up other spurious stuff. But no, that seems to be a bit wrong. So the channel 1 waveform is measuring 120 hertz, so that's correct, but channel 2 is not. So, what's going on there? Let's have a look through here. Is the period of the signal? No, it's not, because the frequency is wrong, so the period must be wrong. Um, so, A6, U3, and U4, etc. I hate that etc part. Is, it, is, that, is that it, or is there more? <laughs> I really wish it would just say, you know, yeah, okay, so let's look at U3 and U4 then, and see if I can see anything there. And that's basically into that procedure part, so we'll go through that. them. Problem being zoomed in. So U6 and U, U3 and U4. So that's bottom corner of the ball. Bottom right hand corner. So that's two, two, that's two chips at the top right hand side of the screen right there. So let's find them on here. So U3 is a SN7493. I will have some of those. And U4. Uh, what's that? NAND gate. Quad NAND gate. Doesn't say what the chip is, but yeah, okay, I'm probably fine that anyway. And we'll have a look around there, see if we can see anything odd. I have to try and interpret what's going on there. That's going to be interesting too. Well, I could just pull them out and replace them, I've done with it. Find out that way. So. U3 and U4, which is those two chips there, wasn't it? Yes. So, that's U3, that's U4. So, U4 is a HP part number. <laughs> of course it is. Uh, okay. So the part number is 1820 0054. Let's find out what that is first. Now the XDEVS website, who also does videos as well, does some quite interesting ones, I've been hanging out on there sometimes. Um, he has a um, list there as well. I found it yesterday when I was looking for those other parts. Um, I just need to find where I put it. Um, probably called it HP cross reference, here we go. HP cross reference. Let's open this up. And we'll see what we can find from that. So what the hell did I say it was? Uh, 1820 same, wasn't it? Can't do searches. 1820 hyphen um, 0054, wasn't it? I think that's what it was. Yep. Uh, let's see if we can find that. It found a search. Yes, it did. Um, TTL quad 2 in NAND gate. That's the description. Equivalent number is 4342 
equal to 7400. 7400, okay. I don't know if I have one of those. Let's double check the data sheet on that. Um, see if it looks about right. Let's find one for it. There's a data sheet for the 7400. Let's go check the pin out, see if it looks like it's about right or not. If I can find the pin out. That one's not a great data sheet. Let's try another one. It kind of shows it, but it's not clear. I've got it in my top screen, but I've got the YouTube running, so it's a bit awkward. Let's try another one. I'm sure there's a better data sheet than that. It must be. That's better. That's slightly better. Now I can actually read it. Now, um, let's look at the pinouts again and see what we get from. What do you mean? I've got two windows open here, which is a bit confusing. Let's close this one. I don't doubt I'm open now. And get that one open again. Uh, I need more screens. I've already got two up. I didn't want more. So let's just make sure these look correct. One and two is inputs, three is an output, four and five, input six is output. Um, Twelve and thirteen is inputs, eleven is output, yep, nine and ten inputs. And eight is output, yep, that matches up. So it's a seventy four hundred. That's easy. Uh, cool. I may or may not have so I don't have any of those. No, I haven't got any parts drawers in here with me right now, so I actually have to go and look to see if I've got any. Um, but I can, it's an AND gate. I can analyse it. I can just test the inputs and see if it looks right or not with that and just replace it. So, And it's 74.93. What the hell is that? Um, Miles again. Let's look at that dollar sheet as well. Decade divided by 12 from binary counter. Apparently. 7493, 4 bit binary counter. Here we go. Right, so that's what that part is. So that is potentially I could hook it up to a logic analyzer and analyze it and see what's going on there and just make sure the binary matches up to. Uh, to that, so each, each input should step up. I could do that quite easily. Right, let's get YouTube up again because I can't see the comments. Nothing else yet, okay. Um, so no problem, let's get the pin out for that. Let's just look at my data sheet stuff, I might even have it already. Usually, I, if, I, if I use a part, I'll save the data sheet in my computer so I can reference it quickly, but you go to Google is usually faster. So, let's see if I can find it. 7493 Let's have a look No, I don't have that one yet Okay, let's go get it Looking for it on that page which brought up the device info Let's have a look No not on that page. Right. Here we go. Right, there's the pinout. It's just a picture of the pinout, it's not actually a data sheet. Um, okay. So let's look at this and analyse what's going on. So, pin 14 is the input, so that's the clock. So, it's, so this thing I've got is not the best, but it will show, I can work it out from that. 
So 14 is a clock. 2 and 3 are both reset, which are tied to ground. 1 and 12 are tied together, and 1 is tied to Q0, which it is. So what's the point of doing that? Maybe it's a running option. Uh, so 12 is Q0, so bit 0, or first bit, whichever one, how you want to prefer it. Um, and 11 is the third bit. So it counts interestingly, okay. So bit one and bit four counted, which go to those NAND gates. The Q, so that's Q0 and Q3. Q1 and Q2 are not used, those are pin eight and pin nine. So interesting. Right. YouTube back up again. Uh, stream health is looking amber. Right. So I guess people are watching watching me waffle and Okay, let's have a look. Let's do some probing around on this U three and U four and we'll see if we can figure out what's going on there. See if they're counting correctly. So I'll get my um, probe here. I think I'll take this earth trap off. It doesn't seem to need it. it. Seems to be ground reference all fine, so it's got a little bit noisier, but it still works. That's fine. I'll leave those off. The one they seem to fall off and get stuck, so I'm going to short something out. So I'll leave that second channel running. So we want pin 14 first, or U3, see if that's actually clocking. So pin 14, oh, it is pin 1 down at the bottom corner there, it's pin 1, and I think these are 7s, 2, 4, 6, 7, so pin 14 is that one there, like that. And yes, there's definitely something going on there. Let's just tie this up a bit. There's an interesting clock, turn channel 2 off, just tie it up. There you go. Yep, that's fine. Nice clock signal right there. It's not a completely pure square wave. It's got some asymmetry there, but yeah, it's it's a clock signal, so that should be fine. So we need to look at two and three just to make sure they are grounded. They should be. So those over here. Yeah, definitely grounded. That's fine. Pin 1 and pin two, uh, 12, so pin 1 is tied to 12, so it should be the same as 12, which is clocking out like that. If I look at frequencies, I might actually be able to um, work out the division ratios if I look at frequencies. Right, it's so 3.441 kilohertz. Let's just uh, grab a pen, which I've got here somewhere. 3 point, let's say it was 441, 1441. Yep, 441, right. This pin's not working very well. Oh, there we go, it's warmed up a bit now. Right, that's on pin 1, or pin 12, we'll call it pin 12, so it should be. Uh, the clock frequency was what? 6.4. Six point eight eight two. Six point eight eight two. Which means we've got to divide by two on pin twelve. Okay. Hi David, how's it going? Alright, so that's doing a divide by twelve by divide by two. And being bit one, it goes on, off, on, off, on, off. So that is correct. That's divided by two. So that one there looks all right so far. So the next pin we need to check is pin 11. So because one was tied to 12, I'll double check that anyway to make sure 12 has definitely got a signal there. Yep, it's fine. And 12, 11. That is 
430 hertz. So 430 hertz. So what does that divide down by? Where's my calculator gone? I've got another calculator which I actually prefer because it's just simpler. It's a nice little little four banger thing. Um, anyway, I, that's somewhere. <laughs> it's put. It's somewhere. I don't know because things are upside down from the buddy house being moved around. So six eight 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 two, which is the clock frequency. Divide that by four thirty. That's sixteen. That sounds kind of right, doesn't it? Let's divide by 16. So that's pin 11. That's pin 12. Yep. And that is pin 14. So I think that the U3 is working okay. That seems okay. Any other ideas? Um, right, so we'll look at U4 next then, which is that uh, adder. Let's just spin us around a bit so I can look at the screen a bit better from where I am. I might zoom in more as well. You know, it's a bit easier for you too. It's basically one frequency 1K going into pin 5 and pin 12. I think I might sit down so we all could stand up the whole time. Cheer up. Alright, so let's go. Let's just go through from the bottom. Eh? One, two. That seems like a nice, simple, logical way to do it. So, pin one is a 3.44 kilohertz. Wave, that's fine. And that's from pin 12, that's correct. That's, a, that's not got a broken trace or anything there, it's good. Pin 2, it currently has nothing. Nothing at all. So bear that in mind, that comes from pin 11. So let's go back and check pin 11. Yep, nothing there. So let's look at pin 12 and 13. So we'll check 13 first because it's at the bottom. That's always high. In this case, if I change range, if I do something, I might get a different result or not. Mm hmm. Still not triggering. Not seeing any range changes. It's maybe because it's stuck in that range. Just let's just short these terminals and see if we get a range change. Um, make sure it's back to where it should be. Okay, range hold on. Although actually no one off the light one now. Just want to see if it's going to change. That's staying high the whole time. Where's that coming from? Oh no, I'm on 13, no, I'm not 12. 13 goes somewhere else, that's a reset line, which is tied to something else, another reset line of U5 A and B, which is fed from plus 5 volts. Okay, so that might be fine, that's S held high. So I should be getting 5 volts in that pin there, okay, this makes more sense. And yes, I'm getting. I've, I've pushed my probe down to 10 times. <laughs> that doesn't help. You're going 50 volts, that's not right. No. <laughs> yeah, 5 volts is better. Okay, let's just sort this out. Okay. It's fine. 
So pin 12 is also currently high. And it's 4.2 volts, it's slightly lower. Oh, by 16, yeah. Well, it's a binary, so it should be divided by 1, divided by 4, divided by 8, divided by 16. So it should only be because it's only look at a single bit. If I was doing 16 and 2 together, then also you get 32. But um, So it's individual bits, so it should only be a 16th of the time. So I think 16 is correct. So you went 2, 4, 8, 16. I'm assuming I'm interpreting that correctly, of course. Um, right. So it takes a while to look at the chat thing. So I don't know you go you comes down that. So we was like, so that was pin 12 is seeing 4.6 volts, wasn't it? 4. Point, something like that. Stick it back on there. And just increase it slightly more so it's a bit more obvious on the screen. Okay, so... Let's change ranges by forcing it to change ranges. Nothing happening. Change right. It's not changing around. I would have expected that to change. It's changing ranges, but the scope's not changing. Now, seeing as that comes from Freak, oh, maybe, oh no, it's just Freak 1K. Ah. It's, I really need to read this properly, don't I? Right, let's change that. There we go. <laughs> okay, that's 1.2 volts. Now, if there's a zero, that's a little bit on the high side for my liking. But we'll check the output and see if that compares, see if the output's switching on and off. All right. So, that's pin 11 you want to look at. So, is it right? 14, 13, 12. 11. I think I was on 11 actually. 11 switching, that's fine. So, yeah, that's inverting as it should be. That's okay. So, the, F the U4B section is working correctly. I suppose I should go back and check U4A section. That's that pin there. That's waveform as well. Yeah, so that seems to be okay. Whether it's inverting or not, though, I should probably check the inversion. We can do that. So I want pin one and three of that device. And I'll try and see what I'm doing as well, which is also a little bit tricky. Without slipping off the pins. Yep, they're inverted, that's fine. Look at that. That's inverted, absolutely fine. Okay, so U4C is also okay. So now let's check U4A. It's probably quicker to take the chip out and just put a new one in. <laughs> but hey, this is troubleshooting. It's part of it. Um, yeah, yeah, that's right, David. That's right, I figured it out eventually. <laughs> I actually started reading it properly. Yeah. Uh, okay, so U4A, so that's pin 4 and 5 and 6. So 4 and 5 are inputs. So that's 4 there, which has got a waveform on there. There you go. 5 is just low right now. And that comes from that Freak 1K thing, so yep, yeah, that's fine. And 6 is waveform on or high. Now, does that make sense? Potentially, let's have a look. Let's look at that again. So that's got a waveform 1.4. Pin 5 is always high. Pin 6 has a waveform. Yep, that's correct. Let's look at this again with the 1k range set. So waveform on that pin. That's always low. That's always high. It's an end. 
yep okay that's fine that's right as well all right let's check out the next one pins 9 10 and 8 a bit tangled up now So let's go this be eight. So let's check eight. Eight's got a waveform on it. I'll turn channel two back off again. Um so looking at nine, ten are inputs, so it's nine is always high, ten is always low. in this configuration. So let's go back to pin 8 and change frequencies and see what happens. Uh, pin 8 is that one. And yes we do get different clock rates. Let's get the trigger set correctly. So that's 430 hertz there, or 3.44 there. Yep, okay, that seems to be okay. So, what the hell does that mean? Yep, so how much? Yep, you're definitely right there. Sex clock rates. Bang on. Exactly right. Um, So the issue I was having then is that there is that waveform being incorrect. So why was that? Oh, I've got some emails pop up. Just got to check these out. In case there's anything important, just some eBay stuff. Let's see if there's anything anything I can quickly buy. <laughs> oh look, there's an HP four two six one A for four hundred bucks. No, <laughs> I'll need to fix this one first. Uh, what else we got? Yeah, nah. Actually, hold on. Oh, no, it's just tempting. I don't know how exciting this is for you watching me check my email, but uh, Microsoft frequency counter might be worth a look. Postage, might not ship to New Zealand. Okay, well, not that then. Okay, keep going. What's this? Of intermission, nah, a little bit expensive. Not nah, only that. Oh, what's that? Ah, this face plate. Don't want that. Okay, right, no problem. I, I watch out on eBay for various things for popping up and try and get the get them for a decent price, and we'll see how we go with that. But yeah. Yes. Uh, check Q2 and Q3. Q2 and Q3. Okay, who are they? Yes, Q2. So that's from the POL section, or phase detector section. So that's. Um, or well, a whole, whole circuit with reference as a, as a phase-up loop. I'm getting a correct clock though. Well, is the clock correct? Am I getting the right frequencies? That's the thing, I mean, yes, it's clocking correctly in this in this U3 and U4 section, um, and it's doing a correct division, but is the clock frequency correct? which would line up with the phase being wrong, wouldn't it? So, okay. This Q3. This Q5. Oh, Q3 is like right over here. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll see what you're saying. Because that feeds back into these fits.
and I was looking at the G5A just to complete this logic section. If I just look at that as well while I'm in this area. Um, what is that? Flip flops. Dual flip flop. So that's clocking on that one. Toggling nose. That's tied to ground. That's feeding that section. So U5 is also a consideration. That's something I need to look at in case that isn't uh, flip flopping correctly and correct, correct the waveform. But you're saying Q2. Let's have a look at Q2 then. Eh? This is going to do that. Yeah. Check Q2 and Q2, three. sorry not Q2 or Q3. Check the transistor's driving effects, ah okay, right, so you mean these ones over here which is Q3 and Q4, yeah? Um, unfortunately you can't see where I'm pointing on the mouse, I need to figure out a way of working around that, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that actually. It's some kind of overlay thing. Um, can I draw on a diagram? No, that's not something I'm usually doing. Suppose I could do this. Is that going to work? Oh, yeah, that works. I can do that, can I? Okay. So yeah, Q3, Q4, right there. That's what you're looking at. Eh? Okay. Um, okay. Let's have a look at those then. We'll skip that other logic piece for now, and we'll check those out and see if they're driving the fits right. Or well, appear to be driving the fits right. So Q3 and Q4. Oh, where? Let's find them on the layout. Q3 and Q4 are right next to U8. And that's U8 there. That's Q3 and Q4 in here. So Q3 is the bottom one. So that's Q3 and that's Q4. So let's see if we can see anything going on there. Three volts down there has a frequency, and the middle pin, which is a bit hard to get to, but I can do it. Also, has a frequency. As far as what the pin is, I'm not sure. Um, I'll have to investigate that, but that's high as well there. There's a frequency there, and there's a frequency there, so they appear to be working. Um, obviously amplifying. So we've got minus 12 volt supplies on both of those transistors. And they both got those negative supplies, so yeah, I think that's okay. I mean, they're the PMP devices. So we've got that positive rail there, 9 volt rail. Well, especially 9 volts, is it? And a knife I'll drop across that diode, so um, yeah, that's so about three volts or so, which is what I was getting. So that seems okay. That diode looks alright, and that transistor seems to be working okay. Um, and there's a frequency there, but the frequency seems to be wrong based on that phasing, doesn't it? So, why is the frequency wrong? That's the question. What's generating that frequency? Well, the PO obviously is, but. Um, now I can't drag around. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, this is generating the frequency here. Just need to understand what this bit here is doing. I mean, if it's a PRL, it should be a feedback. Which is the feedback? Is it this one here? 
a dotted line there is the feedback to the POL. So it's TP2 locked. And there's that pin 13 of that device over there, which I haven't looked at yet. Let's go and look at TP2. Again, that's that waveform which is wrong, though, wasn't it? That was really pulsing quite quickly. So, that's the TP2 there. No. That's channel 2 probe, the channel 1 probe, because that's what's turned on. Alright, so there's that one there, and there's channel 1. So, TP2 is faster than TP1. So that should be telling it to slow down. It, which is the face? I mean, that's the face selector section here. So I need to look at these other devices. I think I, think I need to look at U5 and U6. And it's got these inputs here, um, which I shall show you there. Right. So those are what's obviously selecting this gate array section of AND gates and NOR gate. So we'll look at U5 first. Being flip flop it should be fairly easy to diagnose. Apparently my stream health is getting pretty bad. Um, really? Oh yeah, dropping heaps of frames. Hold on, let's just see if I can sort this out a bit more. To reduce the quality some more guys, I'm afraid. And I'll reduce the audio bit weight. Bit, bit weight. Bit rate. I bloody say it, bitrate. Try and see if that helps it slightly. Um, let's give myself a higher CPU loading to try and encode it um, a bit better as well. See if it will improve the stream health by sending this data. Seems to have got better. Hopefully. No, oh, I'm still dropping packets. I hate this old wireless thing, I just Yeah, it's only just doing it. Yeah, it's only just, it's struggling with it anyway. Thanks guys, Sasquatch Catch over. Yeah, helmet. Yeah, that's right. Um, so yeah, it's getting that feedback here. Um, I'll highlight it with this pen tool. So here's the feedback line here. It's coming from the output of this flip-flop pair there. So it feeds into here, pin one of the phase detector. The phase detector, I see. So that's obviously one input. The second input. Well, yes, there must be a second input. Is from where? Is it this one here, pin 3? Potentially. So, it should be trying to match that. So, I look at pin 1 and pin 3 of U1. We'll find out where that is and we'll see what's actually going on there. Um, probably the frequency is being tested to test the um, LC device. Hmm. Okay. So, where is U1? U1 is this part here. So, pin 1 and pin 3, so look at those, see what we've got. Pin 1 is that frequency we're expecting. And pin 3, it's also another frequency we're kind of expecting. So, let's check the phasing on those. Because in theory they should match. If it's doing what I think it's doing. Let's turn 
the channel if you want to see it. They don't match. So pin one and pin three do not match. So, is it an issue with it trying to control that frequency? Let's short the terminals out. Still out of sync. So, there is a frequency coming into that pin. So, the top rail there, along here, is. Um, I'm trying to highlight it properly. I can't read it. Can I? That top rail here. Looks like a main power supply rail. It's got 4.3 volts across here, so yes, it'd be a power supply rail coming in here then. Um, yeah, there we go, 12 volts coming in. All right, so that's 12 volts applied, pull that up. So therefore, this transistor here must be switching because there's a signal on pin three. So is it this EREF which is wrong, or is it the signal we're getting at the other end of the circuit, or the feedback is wrong? I'm unsure. What frequency is that EREF? If it will read it, any day now would be nice. Slip off again. That's one kilohertz. If I change that, it's 120 hertz. Okay, so it's trying to match that, that clock frequency with the reference frequency here. All right, so those are those frequencies there on pin three. So pin three is correct. And being a phase test, it should be trying to shift the POL frequency so that the input on pin one, which is a feedback. Well, I believe this feedback um, here should match pin 3. I'm assuming I've got this correct. Yeah. Yeah, I'll check that. I'll be checking those next, those flip flops. Yes, um, over here. Yeah, I'll make it a bit bigger for you. So we've already done obviously this U3 and U4 just there. They checked out okay. So we've got these flip-flop pairs here, which is a dual flip-flop U5 A and B. So that's obviously where we need to look yet next to make sure those are working correctly because that's where the feedback is coming from is from that pair. Um, so they're feeding to each other. We got a shared clock rate. So we've got a shared clock. But they feed into each other. Which means that's dividing again, isn't it? Is that divide by four be running as? In which case why do you need to do all the other stuff? Oh, that doesn't make sense. Anyway, I'm probably interpreting it wrong. Name in the device at the input to POL. Well, um, the thing I can see on this diagram here, this U5 is the input to the POL. So we've got, I'll bring it back over. So the, whole, the POL is, is a discrete assembly, right? It's got a discrete circuit. It's not one particular device, it's, it's made up of a range, right? So the only triple five is acting as the oscillator. So you've got pin seven's ground, four and three loop together, two and one, uh, two and eleven loop together, and ten and five are output. Okay, so that's probably a filtering system on a phase detector, most likely, or is that a control signal? It'd be phase detector output. 
in some way and some filtering sometimes. That's what I usually have as a filtering system on them. I'm a bit familiar with PRLs, so I'm not um, too bad with that from CB radio work I do, so I know how PRLs work. Um, this is obviously a different setup, but it's similar. Um, so pin 3 is that fixed frequency at 120Hz or 1kHz we're getting from the front panel switch. All right, so that I believe is fine, that pin 3. Um, and pin 1 is the feedback from the, the back end here, off or these flip flops, it's the output from here. Which is also feeding this next section here too. With um, acting like switches basically, acting like digital switches because it's got those input here. And then that's obviously switching this one on and off, and then you've got NOR gate, so that's acting as a switch system. So I believe the signal comes back from that feedback from those flip flops into this pin here, should match this pin here if it's working correctly. This should be controlling that frequency um, with this oscillator section using the 555 timer. That's my interpretation. Um, yeah, triple five looks like it's running at the wrong frequency. That's, that's, the, that's the interpretation I'm getting is that the um, the clock signal coming into pin 14 of here is wrong. So yes, it has a frequency there and this seems to be dividing the frequency and and adapting it as required, um, the frequency is wrong. That's what it looks like, yes. Um, so I'm going to check this flip flop because it's a feedback. If it's running a higher frequency, then um, it's saying divided by four. Because if you're trying to equal the, the two frequencies together, so if they're out of phase, it will, tr it will put a correction voltage out in order to change the frequency. Um, I'm standing up so you can't really see me. Mm. <laughs> I'll stand over here. So it puts that correction voltage out, which, will, which is tries to correct for the frequency difference or the phase difference. Um, and so it's looking for the output frequency to be the same as the input frequency on pin 3. So at pin 7, it should be the same as pin 3 um, on the POL or phase detection section. So if that is doing a divide by four, then that should be trying to put out four times the frequency. Yes, if it's divided by four. Um, anyway, look at this U5. And we'll see what we find there. Right? Just see if there's anything odd going on there. Otherwise, it could be an issue with the actual frequency control of the POL on the triple five timer. So U5 is where U5 is the third chip along. So that's that one there. That's U5. So let's have a look at that. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, so 6.442 was what I measured, yes. Uh, well, 6.882 6 is what I measured. I've got it noted down here. Um, yeah, like that. Maybe we'll see it noted down really badly. That's what we got. So, um, but not bad memory, you're pretty close. So, yes, it does. You'd expect it to be a different frequency, it should be 4 kilohertz, yes in order to match frequency and we're not getting that but if it's either the phase detector has failed so it's not putting out the correct correction voltage um, or the discrete circuitry around that's failed so it's putting out the wrong frequency um, or it could be that this is not dividing by the correct amount and so that it's run out of adjustment range so if the um, if the phase detector cannot put enough correction voltage out or, or reduce the correction voltage enough to get the frequency correct, then it may be that it can't actually compensate enough for what these devices are doing. So it could be either end of the circuit. Yeah, um, well, it's, it's divided by two, divided by sixteen at the end of the um, binary counter device, isn't it? So that uh, was at the four U U four D pin eight was that divided by two, divided by sixteen. 
Um, but of course it's running to flip-flops and they link together um, I interpret that as um, being a, another divider um, I could be wrong but anyway we'll, we'll do some poking around in U5 and see what we find so we want let's see this is a bit messy so we'll start with the bottom one pin 8 and pin 9 let's have a look at those first shall we um, pin 8 over here There's a the frequency there, what is it? Come on, what's the frequency? Tell me what it is. I'm using it on probe, that's why it's not too much what it is. <laughs> oh dear, okay. Try again. So that's 3.442. And it should also switch that one, so yep. So that's pin 8. So that is toggling correctly, I suppose, is it? Will it be half? Will it be divided by two if it's a flip-flop? That's not sure doing right. It's not giving me a frequency, it's not leaking here. And that's 430. Let's check pin 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 430 as well. Uh. Oh, hold on. I'm doing this wrong, don't I? I think. Let's check pin 7 and 10, I'm probably interpret this wrong. Check 7 and 10. There we go, that's divided by 2. I'm looking at the wrong bloody pins. Right, it's 215, so that's half. And 10 should be half as well. So yes, that's dividing those by two. So the flip-flop section is working okay. It's the Q, um, Q and not Q are preloads, aren't they? So let's look at the other side, 5A. So we want pin 14 and pin three, and pin one for the clock signal. So look at that first. So that is 4.30 as well. And so on 14.3. Go on, measure frequency. It's not liking that frequency on that one for some reason. Is that jittery? Is it a clue to what's going on? Chip in 14. Pin 14 is 430. Okay. I'm suspicious that's wrong. I think U5A might not be right because I'm not getting half the signal out from the clock. I'm getting the same signal as the clock on pin 14 and pin 3 seems jittery. So maybe there's a problem with this chip.
trying to see if I see anything obvious in there. I'm having issues triggering on this input here. So it's jumping around. Now it's stable. That's interesting. Suspicious. Right over here, I can see some jitter on those lines there. It's hardly anything. It's probably nothing. But yeah, that um, that frequency on pin 14 is interesting. I thought that would be half the frequency, and it's not. They're both the full frequency. Hmm, that's suspicious. I wonder if the chips fall. I was be expecting it to be halving it. Uh, hmm, good question. What's going on there? I might have to interpret this flip-flop assembly and just figure out exactly what the logic's doing there. It might be that's what I need to do. Because it's Q and not Q, which are like preloads, aren't they? I'm not completely up to scratch with flip-flops. I mean, they're the most basic circuits, and I don't actually know them that well. Amazingly, I don't know how to work on it, but yeah, um, let's just try and get this out of here. What's that part number? Um, let's find out what it is first. So, 7473N. So, let's have a look for one of those. If I can type the right numbers, it'd be great. See how this is working. I just want to try and figure out what's going on here because I think I'm missing something. It may not be wrong. Uh, right. Let's excuse my silence while I'm trying to interpret this thing. Yeah, it's got a preload, doesn't it? So if it's in a certain state. What's the clear doing? Is the clear turn on or off? Which pin's clear? Uh, clear is pin 2 and pin 6. Pin 2 and pin 6 are motors reset. But okay, well, okay, that's fine. And they are both pulled up, so they're high. So in those states, it is looking at the Q zero, and, uh, so the Q and not Q inputs as well. So it could be interesting with that. That's another aspect. Q 
here, not here, output, really. I could be getting this wrong there. Oh, it does. Yes, there are I outputs. JK's inputs. Oh my god, what am I doing wrong here then? Yeah, I've got this completely backwards. My initial response is. Uh, initially, I was correct. So, okay, so Q and not Q are outputs, yes. J and K are the inputs. Right, okay. Okay. So, yes, I might need to look at this logic on this thing and just figure out whether that's right or not. Or I could just start the chip out and replace it. Um, I probably have one. It's possible I've got one. Um, I could analyse this logic or I could try doing that. Um, yeah, just trying to. It's just on reset pins OK. Um, I think I measured that voltage somewhere else already. Yes, I measured that voltage on pin 13 of U4. So, yes, that, that resistor is okay. But yes, good point. Um, yeah, so J and K are like the preload things and the Q's and the outputs, right? Yeah, I was thinking of that right the first time. Confusing myself with these bloody things. So. I might have to sit down and write a bloody logic diagram for this, but that's not going to be a good video, is it? That'll take me a while to sit down and work it out. It's probably okay. I might go back. I'll leave that bit, I think. There is some stuff going on there. So, if those are... It's an output from that one. Yes, I was having trouble measuring that pin 8 of that U5B, wasn't I? Um, it was jittery and I got the same thing on the other one. So yes, the output of U5B was a little bit jittery. I'm getting that 430 there and 430 there. So the outputs from these ones, from the U5A, if it's toggling halfway through each cycle, then it'll be doubling the frequency again, but that makes it kind of pointless, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm going to go back to the rest of the circuit. I'm going to go back and I'll just bear that in mind that that is a little bit confusing. <laughs> uh, I hate things that do back on themselves like that. Like, oh, you have to sit down and analyse it. Let's get back out here so I can see the chat again. Yeah, I'm looking at this. At the, um, you can't see it on screen, but I've actually got the data sheet open for the JK fifth lot. And it shows the logic input and the output uh, data. It shows the logic diagrams for that. Or the function tables, so it does give me that information, which is which is means you know, I have to think a bit less, which is great. Um, but the fact they're tied back into each other means I need to actually analyze the logic at each stage and how they're interrelating to each other. So I think I'll just step back a bit and I'll look back at the um, PRL stage because that's a bit I understand pretty well. So um, we'll uh, we'll go back assuming that the Effectively, it's the voltage cold oscillator, right? In VCO, that's what that really is. Um, well, potentially, the actual oscillator circuit itself is quite interesting. Um, so we'll see what's going on here. See if I can identify if there's a a maxing out of the voltages or or vice versa um, to see if there's a control issue there, because it may be that it's trying to control it and it can't do it. Um, or it could be that there's an issue with one of the components in that section of the circuit and so it's not oscillating the right frequency. And again, you can't control it. Or it's controlling it correctly, but it's generating the wrong frequency, which is what we need to look at there too. So that should tell us whether the output frequency is wrong um, or whether the phase detector is trying to, whether the phase detector thinks it's correct or not. 
so I should narrow it down a little bit. So I look at pin 5 and pin 10 where we are there, so pin oh, U1 was a what? It's a, another HP part number, it's a 1820-0630. Let's have a look in this list I've got open here somewhere. And 1820-0640, is that what I said? 0630. Let's see if that appears in the list. It does. So, thank you very much, XDevs. This has been really helpful. <laughs> um, so, this is MC4044P. Okay, so let's get that data sheet for that. Type all the numbers in, it'd be helpful. And I must put a little data sheet in there to narrow it down a bit. of sites purporting to be it. There we go. Uh, okay, this is variance, but that's okay, shall we? I'll just slowly look at the chat. Yeah, state machine. Yeah, so it's, it's looking at what it's already got there and switching states, so it could actually be changing logic halfway through a flip-flop, maybe. Um, yeah, it's confusing, so I'll just leave that bit for now. I can always go back to it. You know, I'm just trying to analyze the whole whole stage, but I may not need to go that far. Um, so let's look at the phase detector section and see if it's actually trying to control it correctly or not. So here we go. Uh, it's a data sheet, which not exactly the right one, but it's close. It's a equivalent part. Let's see if we can see what the pin actually is on this thing. So it's got two phase frequency detectors inside it. Um, one's on pin one, one's on P3, as we expected. Um, so charge pump and output, amplifier output is on pin eight. Pin five is part of the charge pump circuit. And so is pin 10. So back to this. So pin 5 and pin 10 are charge pump. Okay, and pin 8, which is not used, is an internal amplifier. So that's charge pump. Awesome. Same as I'm little about. <laughs> okay, um, we've got here 4 and 13 are linked together. Okay, so what it does, it's got each phase frequency detector, and those pins are actually brought to the outside of the chip. So, which is why it's got these internal these loops here. I'll just highlight those. So, you've got this loop here between 2 and 11. That is charge pump. Well, phase detector 1, sorry, goes into um, phase detector for the charge pump. And phase detector 2 um, that is pin 4 and 13. Is that no? Two or thirteen. What's going on here? Hold on a second. Twelve and six. Okay, so I'm using one of the charge pumps. Sorry, uh, one of the phase detectors keeps using one words now. So, so I uh, branch off internally. So, pin one and pin three go to both phase detector circuits. So, pin two and thirteen are the output of those phase detectors. So we've got pin two there, pin thirteen here, and they link back into pin four and pin eleven which are the inputs to the charge pump. So you can actually look at each section of the um, circuit there and see how it's working, so that's interesting. Right, back to the chat now, because I can't see it. Okay, nothing changed yet, that's cool. Right, so let's see what we can do here. Let's, um, oh, wrong video, wrong video, wrong window. It's a bit bigger so you can see it a bit easier. So let's probe around this phase detector section, phase detector section, and um, see what's going on this charge pump section. So this is obviously 
controlling this, but is it doing it right? So we've got this transistor here as well. So it looks like it's trying to control this area here, which is interesting. I need to look at a triple five timer, believe it or not. I need to go and look at the diagrams for that. Because <laughs> I can't remember how the bloody things work. Um, is it five a reset? I, I can't remember. I'm going to have to look that up as well. Let's go and have a look at that as well. Okay. Any triple five timer. God. Data sheet. This is embarrassing almost. It's been a while since we used one. But you know, it's so bloody common, it's incredible. So let's just have a look. What's the pinout for this so I can interpret the timer? Ah, come on, that's a block diagram. Here we go. So, three is the output. Let's get yeah, one hand. So, three is the output, which is what we expect going to the trigger. Yep, uh, the clock signal. Uh, one is ground, yeah, eight is 3CC, yep. Uh, four is reset, which is tied high. Seven, six, and two are discharge threshold and trigger. So those are the actual oscillator part here, aren't they? And five is control voltage. Oh, yeah, okay, so it's doing variable voltage control. Control voltage controls the threshold and trigger levels, ah, okay, and determines the pulse width of the output waveform. Pulse width, really. External voltage applied to this pin can also be used to modulate the output waveform. Right, so yes, that is controlling it with a basic fixed frequency range between those two resistors then, and that capacitor at C3. That's why I'm interpreting at least. Look for an some circuit example, see if I can find something similar. Uh, here we go, 560. Not the same. Not the same. It's always handy if you just look at an example's um, circuit for seeing and actually understand it a bit better. No, I think I've run out of examples of circuits. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, five is control, yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. And it's got a white W1 link on the diagram there. No trouble finding a triple five, it's right there. And I'm guessing that is the Y link there. Looks that way. Let's take these clips back off. I'll try to. Seems to, no, here we go. The equipped on, so. Well, let's go back to the PRL section and see what voltage we've got coming out of that. Find a charge pump and we'll see what's going on there. Let's move that over. So, 5 and 10. Let's have a look there and see what's going on. And my stream is dropping down again. Although it seems to have recovered again. Yeah, interesting. Right. Uh, new one. Pin. What am I looking for? Five and ten. Five. Not a lot going on there. Another right pin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven pin device. Uh, uh, Fourteen pin device. Eight, nine, ten. It's pin ten. Not much going there either. Hmm. I think that's trying to compensate. On roll mode. I see rolling. So there is a voltage there, but it's very low. So it might be trying to compensate for the um, 
for the frequency it's you know set it's very low there it's there's actually zero what tray around is that working that's the question uh, it's like a pen five of the triple five timer what do we have here oh that's the question that's ten channel two off can't see I think So, that pin is at 5 volts. Now, does a high voltage or a low voltage increase frequency on this thing when you've got a control volt the time? Uh, Yeah, Y1 is there. Um, I think it's this little white jumper just here. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not. I think you probably can just see it. Just there's a little white jumper. I think that's it. Um, let's go into a diode. Let's have a look on the layout. And it doesn't designate it, but it does designate the diode as CR5. And yes, CR5 does go to that wire one end CR4 will be the other one which all linked together yeah so that goes to one end I can't see where the other end goes but it's likely to be correct so CR4 CR5 junction is one end of that wire so that will be it I don't know why they put a wire link in there it's a bit strange interesting maybe it's meant to be as a test point or something Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll probe on there and I should get the same perfection as I was on probe on pin 5. Here we go, high voltage. So that's constantly high. Okay. Why is that constantly high? So pin 8 is... Um, what voltage is that? I'm not currently seeing voltage measurements. Let's just bring this up a bit. So that's 5.36 volts on pin 8, which is the main supply voltage, so okay, that's alright. And pin 5 is the same, is it? Pin 5 is 4.1 volts. So the CR5 is also limit the current, limit the voltage into the pin 5, so that's 4.32 volt CR5 apparently. So that's the most it can get to, which makes sense. CR5 open? No, I don't believe so, because um, that's dragging the supply down. That seems to be correct. So. Voltage on pin 5 is lower. Um, I can't test CR5, I suppose. That's CR5 there. I mean, obviously, that's 4.1 volts across it. And 240 there. Uh, I do have a tester for that somewhere. Well, I can actually test that diode to check the voltage is correct. And, you know, in that, in that diode itself, not the circuitry around it. I need to find it. Really good. I think it might be in here. This little thing here, which I got from Banggood. Um, I think that's the right one. Yes. So it's a little tester, and it can measure it in the diodes, which is handy. So I'll get this out, and we'll, I think it's got battery in it. Yes, it has batteries in it. Okay, so turn it back off, turn the relative off. We want Zener diode test. Which is on. 
Yep, so let's turn this unit off. And we'll test across that zinner and see what we get. I'm not sure which side's positive. We'll figure that out, I suppose. Not that way around. It's not the easiest thing to get into. But, uh, not this anyway, it's not really made for this. Well, I'm getting 1.5 that way. And 0.6 that way. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Might be being affected by something. It's entirely possible. Because it's certainly more than 1.5 volts when it's running. So it's not open. But this is being a bit inconclusive. So it's a handy little thing. It's, it can measure up to 24 volts on a, on a Zinner. So, um, yeah, you kind of expect that to be right. Let's check this again. I'm not sure which side of this is supposed to be positive. See? I don't even see that on screen, I'm like, it's 0.6, so I probably can't because it's behind the bloody um, window display. It's not probing very well, but 1.5. Interesting. I was supposed to be able to get a decent measurement from that. Seems I cannot. Would have been nice to prove it was okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, let's get this stuff sorted out. If anyone's interested in this, it's uh, what's it called? I don't know. This says SMD. Oh, there we go. Four O Seven O A. I believe that's what it is anyway. Go figure. Something like that. Right. Let's back out the way. So that was a bit inconclusive. Let's just do the data test on the multimeter, right? Let's just do that. See if that comes up or anything, showing any problems. I've already gone around and tested a whole bunch of diodes and stuff anyway, um, previously, so it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, diode test is I always forget where it is under there. Point six five, which is what I've got with the other meter, and. Shows it open, okay. So, yeah, um, I think it's okay. I mean, the fact of getting a result in one direction, I think that part's probably fine. So, why are we getting high voltage on there? That's the next question. Is R8 a problem, or is that that transistor arrangement that is there? Um, where the hell that is? That's interesting. Pin 9, 8 and pin 7. What is that thing? So Q2, which is where? This Q3, 
Q2's top up here. So that's Q2 right there. And we've got C2 is that big capacitor next to it just there. That's C2. I just wonder what that pace is at P slash O U1. Is that part of U1? 8, 7, and 9. Those pins aren't used. Yeah, so I'm looking at it now, helmet, helmet being part of U1. It's, it's right, because this. Um, this designator here for the capacitor was confusing me a little bit, but it looks like this bit here. I think it means part of U1. If that makes sense, wouldn't it? So let's just sit down again. So that is all in the same region. Makes sense. Let's put up the data sheet for that part again. And see what that is. Pen. 9 and 8 are the amplifier, and 9 input out, 8 is output, and 7 is ground, 14 is VCC, so that's 7 there, and 7 there, I'm not showing seven, pin 7 twice, that's interesting. Um, okay, so that looks like it's part of the U1. Yes, David, that's right, you got it in the first two, so yeah, U1. Um, Right, so the question there is let's measure voltages on pin 9 and pin 8 then and see what's going on and see if that makes sense. Alright, U1, pin 9 is there. Nothing there. Pin 8 is high. Let's just increase this resolution a little bit here so I can see a bit more detail. Pin 9. There's a little bit of something there. It might just be noise. So that's pin 9 there, get it right, that's pin 9, that's pin 8, which is high. The pin 8 is high, even though pin 9's got almost nothing on it. That's just being pulled up, it's supposed to be pulling, pulling it down. Pin 9's supposed to go higher to pull pin 8 down, yeah? Um, right, so... Why is that not running? Is Q2 dodgy? Or is it just maxed out its range? Maybe it's trying to compensate for that voltage, uh, for, for that frequency error. And um, that's why it's all at one end of this range. If I can intercept the the feedback from that flip flop, and inject my own signal, I can test to see if the PRO is working. I can make the frequency lower and um, see how it compensates. Now anyway, I could check the phase tensor. How can I do that? So that's on pin 1. Is it an easy way of getting to that to see what's going on? Can I desolder it or something like that? Let's just pull the card out and have a look. Because that's what I think I need to do now is just to substitute a new signal. So pin 1 is there. which comes all the way from over here. I don't want to cut in tracks. Um, enter there, which is to that test point. Um, so from this end here, that's that flip-flop. Or whatever it was. Something like that, wasn't it? Um, 
that's a little bit tricky. I don't really want to be cutting tracks ring line on it. Comes from over there and through there. Yep, yeah, okay. I want to inject my signal. That's a bit hard. I don't want to be cutting tracks. Hmm. You know what it is? That's what I'm looking at. Right? That's a technique I use when I'm doing CB radio work when I'm diagnosing a PRL fault. Is I'll inject my own frequency into the PRL. There's two ways of doing it. Can you inject your own voltage into the VCO and see how the PRL reacts? Or you can um, inject your own frequency into the PRL and see how the VCO reacts. Um, anyway, that's kind of what we're doing here. Q2, yes, I'm, that's what I was thinking of as well. To see if Q, Q2 is actually supposed to be turning on. And pulling that high, um, we can check that. Now Q2 was, uh, I think it was that one there, the metal one. So I'll get my transistor tester out and we'll just chuck it on there. Unsold flip flop replaced the socket. Yeah, that'd do it, wouldn't it? That would do it. Um, Chuck this on here. Let's chest that transistor first. Do that. So I'm getting onto all the legs. It's going to be a little tight, but okay. Not too bad. Done worse. Dial or dial junctions. Mmm, that's interesting, isn't it? Aha. Uh -huh. So, the blue is a registering. Let's just do it again, just in case it's a bad connection. Aha. Uh -huh. Maybe we've found it. Q2 doesn't appear to be working. That looks very promising, doesn't it? Very promising. Let's get some southern gas out and let's get this part out. I'm going to have to disturb the microphone. So right. Okay, so I'll try this Q2 first. It's just a NPN transistor, so I'll probably drop any bloody part in there actually see if it works, isn't it? It's just acting as a switch. So let's just get this off for now so I'm working a bit easier. We'll take this part out and retest it once it's out of circuit. In case it changes anything. Yeah, yeah, that's right, Q2 should be getting controlled um, by that charge pump output, like pin 10. And pin 5, obviously the, the junction of those. But um, the fact there's no, the transistor tester, can't say, transistor tester gave result of not being a transistor. So um, that's a good sign that maybe that part's blown. Which ties in with what's going on. I think that's all. Yep. Well, this, all this. I'm afraid this is going to be noisy on the audio. Um, yeah, let's get this thing out. Actually, I might need to put some fresh solder on it first. Let's uh, get a iron running. Let's get that one going. Playing around with this new fake Heiko I've got, this FX951, which you've probably seen a video on. Just trying it out and messing around with it. I've modified the mount. Um, I think it's on camera. No, it's not. There we go. So I modified the mount. I've dealt this piece here and turned it upside down because it's got like a piece of wire. It just didn't sit in there. So I've turned it upside down so it sits on the wire instead and it just that actually works a lot better. <laughs> so yeah, go figure. Alright, let's, let's put some fresh solder on here. Get them to find the part again. Okay, so 
good. And I'm afraid to say this is going to be noisy because it's my solar sucker. I imagine I'm in shot, am I? Yeah, barely. It's not soldering very well to get some heat through the board, I think. Slightly better. Has that done it? Not well. So I'm wanting to incorporate. I'm after the old-fashioned way. out. Now what is this thing? <laughs> Who the hell knows what that is? It's a uh, it's marked as F4 big F um, maybe it's Fujitsu or something like that. Um, so it's 4 hyphen 0 2 3 space 302 there you go. I'll bring up the camera hopefully you can see it Maybe it will focus if I'm lucky. Is it going to focus on that? Not well. Come on. Come on. Focus. It's being persistent, isn't it? Here we go. Right. Oh, no, I lost it again. The thing with this camera is not liking to focus, is it? I can do this a lot much easier on my phone. So anyway, that's the part. So let's retest that. Now out of the circuit might change things. Sometimes it does. But I'm suspecting it's no good. Now it says a transistor. <laughs> now it thinks it's okay. Alright, interesting. So maybe the circuit around it was affecting it. Damn it. There I was hoping I found a problem. So HFE of 302. Um, 0 0.78 volt. And 4.6 current. Leakage, nothing. So, okay, well. Maybe heating up has done something. That's also possible. Or maybe it's a bad connection. Or mm, don't know. What could possibly cause that to give a misreading when it's in circuit? HP part number. Oh yeah. Okay. I'll check that out. Let's look up my list. Which is courtesy of XDEVs, which is brilliant. I'm going to keep plugging them because it's been really helpful. Um, I, I don't know if they, they may, maybe they found it somewhere else too, so I don't know, but I don't know if they originated with them, but they, I got it off their site. Uh, so, 023. No matches! Oh, <laughs> this let me down. Um, or 0071, you reckon? Okay. It's found that part. Um, it's just called J177. I no idea. Don't recognise the code at all. No idea. So I'm suspicious of the fact that I got a misreading in circuit and then it's okay afterwards. Um, yeah, that's always interesting.
So do I put it back in? What do you reckon? Or perhaps before I put it back in again, I could try something. I could use this as a test point and manually control the Darlington. Because that will tell me if the Darlington's working, and it also tell me if I control the frequency or not, won't it? So, what I could do here is figure out which pad I need to go onto for a start. When it goes back to pin 9. Which is down there. Pin 9 goes to that resistor, which goes to there. Is that right? Yep. So it's the very top pad I need, that one there. If I tag onto that, inject my own voltage, um, we can try and control the VCO frequency. How's that sound? That'll tell us whether the dancing works and it'll tell us whether we can control the frequency or not. And it helps to narrow it down a little bit more. This clip is breaking again, that's going to break off. I'm going to buy a 3D printer, eh? I'm going to buy one. Um, and make new bits like this. Okay, so let's figure out how I'm going to tap into this. I could probably just probe it in. I might tack a wire on. Let's tack a wire on. Let's find a wire to tack on. And my stomach's grabbing. Yeah, here's a piece of wire from a pile of crap I've got sitting on the floor. That'll do. Yeah, that's yeah, so right, Helmet. I'm, I'm expecting it is a false reading when it's in circuit. I mean, you do come across that from time to time, you're doing stuff, so it's not unusual. But um, at least whilst it's out, it gives me an opportunity to actually test the circuit manually. Um, now, this is that whole injecting my own voltage thing. So you, you inject your own voltage, you can control things, which is helpful. And it can help to narrow down whether it's um, a control issue or not. soldering is very well but it'll do the job so I'll tack this onto this resistor that's up here I'll tack it on this side because I can see it Why is massively oversized what I'm trying to do, but uh, it should be okay for this. Grab some probe clip things which I had before. I've been same ones. I'll grab these. And I shall drop my power supply voltage down before I do anything else in case I blow the crap out of it. <laughs> it's not good. Uh, let's go down to uh, let's go two volts, that's a nice level centimeter in range. Two volts, and uh, should be a clip on ground onto the chassis because the, sh the chassis is the common ground point. And hook this onto here. Right. I hope you can see that. Let's pop this up again so you can see. Parts list says 360. I've got 305 or something. I've got. Um, all right, so we have that there. We'll power this up. We shall hook up this to. Oh, I must have a screen again. I need to have some more lunch. There we go. TP2 will give us feedback. Okay, that's 240 hertz right now. Let's turn the power supply. And it changed to 215. 
Okay, so it's just reduces voltage some more. Um, one volt, it's changed frequency. It's now 500 and, oh no, it didn't, 215 again. 240, it's changed range a little bit more. Might be too high. Well, that frequency is not changing. Or is it? Now it is. There we go. I'm getting some changing there now. Here we go. So what I'm getting up to, we'll set about 1.3 volts. It starts to change. Frequency is increasing. It's now 560 hertz. Or 550 hertz. But that's it. That's at 5 volts, so I don't want to go any higher than that, obviously. So, so there is a frequency difference there, but it's not as wide a range as I thought I was going to get. So the lowest it is at about 1.3 volts, 1.2 volts. So there it starts to change, 1.2 volts starts to change. And it's pretty much, it's a very narrow window. I'd say, something doesn't seem quite right there. That's 1.5 volts for maximum frequency. 1.1 volts minimum frequency. That's very narrow. I mean, obviously a dial pair is going to have big amplification, but even the range itself of things it's generating is not great. Okay. Well, there's also that R7 and R8 resistor divider there. Let's measure voltages around there too, shall we? Let's see what's going on. Um, and well, that's also the junction of that to pin 5 wire, so we hook onto that, hopefully. I'll try and hook onto that, I'll hook onto the diode, either way. This is what we're getting with voltage changes on the actual input to the device to see if it's changing it by enough or not. So that's not changing by much. It is changing, but not by a lot. Um, so that is sitting at about. I can't see the IMS value actually. I can see the max value. But max value is 3.48 volts. And it stays at that until I get down to about 1.4 volts. Now you're getting 3.9. 6 has gone up. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong bloody numbers again. 4.12 at max value. When it's at lowest voltage input. And it gradually comes down. But not by much. It's not coming right down enough. That's not what I'd expect. Could look at tp one tp 2 You should hear rubber duck. <laughs> <laughs> I have a squeaky toy um, as a email notification sound, which reminds me I should actually check to see what it is in case it's important. Um, some eBay stuff, it doesn't matter. The squeaky toy is my own account, my, my personal email, so it's um, a bit more important. Okay, that's all right. Yeah. 
right, so, all good. Something is not right there, eh? I think it just looks like it's wrong. Um, let's drop this input voltage back down again. So I'm not sure I'm actually doing right. I think I should turn the output off. So, I mean, yeah, it's changing, but I'm not sure it's right. Pin 6 is the 555 control voltage that is the upper divider node of the 555 internal voltage network controlling the switching threshold. Uh, if you say so. <laughs> I, I'm confused by that. Um, I will need to look at the diagram and interpret what you're saying. Hold on. Um, is this 555? Okay, so sort of look, see so if we can understand what's going on. Control voltage is going into a comparator, which um, so control voltage goes to a comparator, which is also compared against the threshold voltage. Um, internal voltage network controlling the switching threshold. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, now I gotcha. Yeah, I understand you now. So yes, there's, there's a little uh, network uh, resistor divider inside the device. Um, okay, I can see that on the layout diagram here, which say the voltage, 12 voltage is compared with the threshold voltage, which then goes to the flip flop. And the trigger also goes to a comparator. And I'm not quite sure what it compares with, it doesn't say. Um, yeah, yeah, pin 5, yeah, I thought that's what you meant. So pin 5 is two thirds voltage, then threshold is one third supply. Yeah, that sounds familiar, actually, I've heard that mentioned before somewhere else, some time ago, um, in theory about these things. So two thirds, because it shows yeah three resistors, which you assume to be the same value, I suppose. Yeah, so threshold is what I probably need to be looking at as well then, and see what the threshold's doing. I don't know, I'm just suspicious what's going on there. Let's pull this back over here. So you can see what I'm looking at. Uh, yeah, I suppose like that. I do not. Um, I mean, yes, the voltage changed, but it didn't change by it as much as I thought it would. I mean, R7 and R8 are obviously going to be acting as voltage dividers, which means it will have a positive offset. Because even if the diode pair is fully turned on, it should. The lighter should get to is half VCC because you got R8 and R7 there, so that's acting as a as a divide by two. So if the diamond is fully turned on, R7 should be well. The end of R7 R8 junction should be about two and a half volts. I'm getting more than that. I'm not getting that. I'm not getting it to drop down that far. But then I also got that. CR2, 3 and 4, which are acting to pull it up as well. So yeah, that makes things a bit more interesting. Try turning it off and on again. <laughs> yeah, many times. <laughs> uh, many times. Uh, funny. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, the voltage is sitting higher than I expected it to. And it's not a big voltage range change. So pin four, what's pin four doing of that triple five? Uh, doesn't say on that particular part of the diagram. I have to go back up to the top. 
Pin four is the reset line, which is tied high. So pin seven is discharge, pin six is threshold. And pin two is trigger. Right. Well, let's look at the threshold voltage as well, and we'll see what we're getting at that pin there, pin two or pin six, because they're linked together. And we'll see how that compares and see if we can make any sense out of that. So we'll go to pin six because that's easy to get to. Right there. And that's what we're getting is that oscillation. Triangle wave, that's fine. Um, which is at 6.8 kilohertz, or 6.86 or so. Yeah, 6.86 kilohertz. And the voltage is. I've got some measurements turned off now, which is a bit annoying. Hold on. Uh, measure channel 1 type. I want to have RMS on there. Okay, so it's 2.9 volts RMS. Um, and now I've lost max. <laughs> Oh, it's not showing enough measurements at once. Let's turn this on and off. And unplug the desoldering iron. Actually, I need the iron back on again. I've got to plug that transistor back in again. No, I'll do that. Okay, let's just sort this out. Uh, I do want maximum as well. Now let's turn minimum off. Uh, hold on. Let's turn this off. Channel 2 is not on. Why am I seeing channel 2 measurements if I saw? Come here. Let's try this again. Maximum. Minimum. IMS. Here we go. Oh, peak to peak's the iron one, isn't it? On peak to peak 2. Okay, so you've got 2.16 peak to peak. The 2.9 IMS value of the peak to peak. With a. I mean, it's got a DC offset on there as well. What's that? That's 1 volt per division. That's going to be 1, 2, 3, and a half volts. Is that 1, 2, 1, 2, 3? Just under 3 volts, about 2.9 volts offset as well. Yes, the IMS value is at 2.9. So, yeah. So, 2.9 volt offset, 2.2 volt peak to peak measurement. If that makes any sense. Um, right. What does that tell us? That's a good question. What does that tell us? So, we've got. Go look at pin five. Well, just probably here, so it's easier. And that voltage there is 3.7 volts with no input voltage. Just power this back up again and make it so I can see what I'm doing. And the most I can get, well, the lowest voltage I can get is is 3.1, so that's still way above that threshold. But 
How is it in relation to the actual waveform? So the max here is 4 volts down to 3.4 volts. So look at the threshold here again. Uh, 6 there. The max is 3.2 volts. And as I change this voltage here, it's changing that level. See that? It's changing. It's shifting off. So 4 volts. So it is matching. The threshold is matching the input. So something is going right there. What does it mean? I've got no bloody idea. <laughs> uh. So, okay, if I look at that input voltage again and see how it relates to frequency, and that'll tell me hopefully if the voltage is too high for the frequency. Does that sound right? Maybe one of those. Uh, diodes are shorted. CR2 through the CR4. It's possible, isn't it? Um, they could be dragging it up too much. They can't get to the last frequency. So what do I need to do there? I need to check frequency of TP2. Let's hook onto that. And relate that to voltage input onto the Darlington. All right, let's do that. So the higher the voltage in, the higher the frequency. So that's pulling it down. So the lower the voltage, the higher the frequency. That's not what we we're expecting, is it? I'll read your comments in a second. I'm almost a bit too far away to see it from right now. Um, because if we're thinking the frequency is too high based on the phase phase the phase relationship between those two inputs, those two test points, because they're supposed to match. So the frequency is too high. Which means it needs a lower getting it right. It needs a lower voltage. At the input to the Darlington. Which in turn means a higher voltage at pin 5, doesn't it? It would, wouldn't it? Um, let's stick this on. So I don't want to test that, I need to test that that jumper or that resistor which is a bit tricky to get on the cockpit. <coughs> don't fall off. If we get on there first of all, we can get about falling off. And that's not going to work. Yeah, it's probably it. Hold it on. Okay. So is that 3.7 volts, hopefully you can see that on screen. And And the wires fell off. Awesome. Now the the voltage is three point seven volts. Hold on a minute. Put the wire back on again. It's a off. Well, I'll wait for this one, I'll read your comments. Triple 5, pull pin 7 to discharge on hitting threshold. 
pin 6 that should be equal to pin 5 on discharging when pin 2 gets to half pin 5 or pin 6 will set the flip flop and stop discharge and start a new charging cycle then repeat its threshold, discharge etc ok yeah it does seem to be doing that kind of thing yes Stay tight on the long enough and work on this thing. Come on. Oh, I forgot what I was doing. <laughs> uh, I was looking at that junction there. Okay. So that voltage there relative to the voltage on here. Why is it not working now? Oh, because I turned the app off. There we go. That's done. All right. So that does need a higher frequent, a uh, higher voltage in order to reduce that frequency. even using the full adjustment range from that Darlington it's not generating enough voltage because the most it can do is 4.32 volts based on the Zener that's in there created some more questions, isn't it really? One of his referenced anywhere in the manual saying what this clock frequency should be. Because if it says somewhere what that clock should be, depending on the frequency, it might tell me whether we're in the right ballpark with the frequency being wrong, or whether it's an issue with this logic over here being wrong because it could still be saying wrong over here you haven't ruled it out completely yet you know, we haven't looked at U7 and stuff like that and what have you right so well, U7's pretty much straight through as a buffer um, yeah inverting yeah it's just, it's just inverting it's all you know, it's doing so I shouldn't really be wrong there but you know, U6 here we haven't looked at yet and U5A we haven't looked at properly so I because you haven't ruled those out yet I'm not confident about those I'm confident about U3 and U4 I'm happy they're okay the triple five is obviously running um, but that frequency seems wrong there's this capacitor here which is obviously going to be affecting the frequency it's possible one overlook looking at the fact it's a bad capacitor. I mean, the, the control voltage is there, but it's not a great control voltage range. And that's what I'm suspicious about, is that it doesn't seem to be a very broad range. It's not changeable very much at all. So let's look at C3, where's that? C3 is an interesting capacitor.
That's a strange looking capacitor, I have to say. It's um, it looks almost like an IC. Oh, the audio is still okay, so I'm kind of behind the mic now. Pleasure to turn around a bit. So, it's a very squared off, it's obviously like a, a poly a poly cap of some kind, um, but it's very squared off. It's, uh, what does it say? 10,000 PF. 0.5% accuracy. So it's a precision. It's a precision cap, which is why it's um, an odd package type. I suppose I can measure that and see what comes out of that, can I? I have measured that capacitor. Maybe it's something to do with that cap. Oh, it's a stream gunner. Nearly three hours. Wow. Okay. I imagine some of you guys want to go to bed. <laughs> uh, okay. Well... I can measure that cap and we'll see what we get from there. Eh? Let's pop this out. I should turn it off too, shall I? And I will find my tester. No, I should use this one. It's just use an automated. Might be good enough. And I'm getting tangled up in wires. Right, so where's that cap? I think it's just here. It's got star grounding going on there too. Interesting. Yeah, it's just there. That's that cap just there. So what does the multimeter think it is? doesn't seem to know. <laughs> it's not making sense of it. So let's try my other meter. It's in shot at least. Is it going to get it or not? So this is similar to what I see on another multimeter, wasn't it? I was getting three hundred and something. 323 and F. Is that wrong? I think so. But it could just be because it's in circuit. Um, yeah. Makes me suspicious. Let's take the control resistor back off. Let's control why I've done all that testing there. I'm going to put that transistor back in again because I think it probably is working. The fact that we took it out of circuit and it measured okay, so I think it's probably fine. Still slightly suspicious of it, but I think it's probably okay. If I can get the thing to go through the leads, there we go. Yeah, it looks good. 
Oh, it's an off again. Oh, I'm getting hungry now. I might have to stop the live stream soon, I think. So, where are we at? Well, Spits in that capacitor, that's where we're at. Let's take that out of circuit. I've already unplugged that one, haven't I? Of course I've. And I'll turn it back off again just now. So we'll take that capacitor out and we'll retest it out of circuit and see what happens. Um, maybe that cap is bad, causing the oscillator to be the wrong frequency. Uh, yeah, that's right, 10,000 PF at 0.05%. Um, I can see 0.5. I'm sorry, yep, 0.05. Is it? No. Plus or minus 0 0.5. It's a 0 0.5, definitely 0 0.5. So, um, it's a correct capacitor, but I'm not sure it's reading correctly. I haven't checked the 7 volts for the supply rail, no. But we're getting no, we are getting voltage at pin eight. We were getting that. Um, so we're getting voltage there in that rail, and we're getting across pin five, obviously, on, on the trip of the um, timer as well when it's pulled up from that supply rail. Unless you're running a different supply rail. But you're right. Always well, checking the supply rails is a sensible thing to do, because it's easy to overlook that. Now this is going to be noisy again as I desolder this. <coughs> Trying to get the heat for the ball at the same time. At least I'll get the other one out. Come on, just do solder. Okay. Ah. Right, so let's test this cap again now, it's out of circuit. And we'll see what it thinks this time. Imagine it's quite an expensive capacitor. So here we go, 9.8 NF. So that's pretty damn close, isn't it? Um, let's change frequencies. This isn't calibrated, I haven't calibrated this for a while. So maybe I'll do a calibration in case that's what's throwing it off. Uh, if I remember how to do it. It's been a while since I've done a calibration. Uh, essence cow. Open, yep. Unfortunately, it's going to take a little while, sorry about that. But we want to make sure this is reading close to the correct value. It seems to be a bit off right now. And my stream health seems to drop down again. Although, according to YouTube, it seems okay on my um, streaming system, so it seems we're right there. Uh, the supply rail... That's a good question, actually. There was a supply there. I didn't verify if it's 7 volts or not. I probably will have to check on that actually just to be sure that it's in the correct voltage range. That's, that's a fair point actually because if the voltage is overall too low it would affect the oscillator frequency. So yeah that's good thinking. I will have to check on that. And maybe this is working but the voltage is too low. That's a good point. Alright, let's done a calibration so let's see what we get now. 
if it's any different. Same. So that's interesting, isn't it? Now, is it this meter which is wrong? Maybe. Um, fortunately, I have others. Let's find one. Well, I've got my bench millimeter. Let's try that one first. Well, again, rather. That agrees with my other one. It says 9.8. Hmm. Maybe this capacitor has gone off value. What do you reckon? Uh, do I have another tester here somewhere? Yes. I just need to find the leads for it. Um, I've got this one. Let's see if this will work. <laughs> Who knows how good this is going to be? Let's, let's find out. Let's see that one. If it's even got battery in it, it might not. Nine eight two oh. Three meters have all said nine eight. So I think you can pretty conclusively say there that it's not right. <laughs> um let's get this thing to turn off again. Don't have to line auto power off, sometimes it doesn't work on anything. Switch off. And I do have another meter here. Um, do you have battery in it? Probably does. It does. So it's use this one too, although I've only got big leads. That's not something else. I think it's the lead here somewhere. Yeah, pair of leads. Shove these in. Capacitance. Uh, sure, open for capacitance. Open, I'm guessing. So, Shane, the guy which made these things, um, I've forgotten his name now. He died, unfortunately. He, he's, he made these and he made some other bits of gear as well. Um, obviously quite a talented guy and unfortunately he died a few years ago so um, he can't get these anymore which is a shame because it is nice now this is saying close to crit value which one are you going to believe I mean, that's like half a PF off if I short it if I short it in zero is that going to do anything and then stick it on there that says 9.3 it's even worse so, zero open, nine nine. Still, even this doesn't agree. All right, so that's four meters that are now said this isn't a ten thousand pf cap. I think I might have run out of meters. No, I've got another one somewhere. I've got one more, <laughs> but I think it's not necessarily going any further than that. If I can get all these wires on the table, so I put this things way in. I think the points we made, this seems to be off value. Alright, I'm going to stop the live stream here and let you guys go and have a life outside of YouTube since it's been going on for like three hours now. And um, I'll carry on tinkering around with this and I'll see what I can get with it and um, see if we make any more progress. I might do another live stream tomorrow morning. So, same time tomorrow, I'll see how we go. Um, and I might just I might oh I might just do video and, and you know do some of those instead but we'll see how we go I might do more live stream tomorrow so um, I'll catch you all then hopefully um, if I'm not on live stream then you know I didn't get around to it but um, I've got other things I need to get done too so I'll catch you later thanks for watching and um, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow.